Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today we're going to be solving problems involving trapezoid and kite using the midline theorem and properties of a polygon. We have discussed several uh, special cases of polygons, specifically with quadrilaterals and parallelograms. And for today, we're going to be working on those types of shapes using the midline theorem and uh, the properties that we have learned about the sum of the interior angles of our polygons. And that's what we're going to be working on today working on problems and applying the properties, conditions, and formula that we have learned from our lesson on special parallelograms so we can answer problems similar to this one. So if you can see, we have a trapezoid in our illustration, but in this particular case, the trapezoid that we are seeing is like a constellation in an xy plane. So our trapezoid STUV is given by the points in the xy plane, and we are going to find the length of the mid-segment yz in this trapezoid using geometry. So the first thing that we need to do, since we're working on the mid-segment or the midline of a trapezoid, we're going to be using the midline formula, which is half of base 1, or half of the sum of base 1 and base 2. Now the challenge here is that our basis are not given by a numerical value, and also it's not an algebraic expression. What we're seeing are points in an xy plane. So to be able to find the basis, so we can use the midline formula, we're going to be using the distance formula from point A to point B, or in this case, from point S to point V, and from point T to to point U to be able to find the lengths of our basis and the distance from our first base which is line segment SV is going to be found using the distance formula so you need to make sure that you still remember the basic formula in measuring the distance given an XY coordinate in our XY plane which is given by this formula, which is the square root of the difference of x squared plus the difference of y squared. So one strategy that I always teach my students in working with a distance formula is to write out the coordinate for the first point, which is here. I'll call s as my first point, given by 0 and 6, and my v point, which is given by 2 and 2. I know that this is x and I know that this is y. So to find the measurement of line segment SV using the distance formula, all I need to do is to find the difference of x and then square it and to find the difference of y and square it and make sure to add them up. And that is how I set up my distance formula faster without any confusion so that I would know that all I need to do now is to find negative 2 squared and 6 minus 2 is 4 squared to be able to find my distance. And negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2 which is 4 and 4 squared is equal to 16. So I know that the measurement of line segment SV is equal to square root of 20, which I can further simplify because I know that 20 is factorable by a perfect square. So 20 can be represented by 4 times 5, and I know that the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 5 is simply square root of 5. So this is now my measurement of line segment SV using the distance formula. So this is one technique that you can use to be able to uh, not get confused with your x's and your y's. So you can find the distance of the two points that you're working on. And in this case, it's point SV. And now that we know that SV is equal to 2 squared of 5, we can now look for the measurement of line segment TU, which is the second base of our trapezoid. So that point or that line segment is represented by two points. So let's 
use the same technique by using point T, which is given by A10, and point U, which is given by 12, 2. I know that this is X and I know that this is Y. So TU is equal to the square root of the difference of 8 and 12. And then I'll square it, add it to the difference of Y, which is 10 minus 2. And then I square it so that I can use my formula. And I know that my formula and my values are in the right places because of this technique. So 8 minus 12 is equal to 4 squared, and 10 minus 2 is 8 squared. And by using my multiplication table that I know very well, 4 times 4 is equal to 16, and 8 times 8 is equal to 64. And now I just need to add this up, and 16 plus 80, 64 is equal to 80, and now that is my measurement for TU. The only challenge here is to know the factors of 80 that will give me a perfect square. And that perfect square that will help me simplify 80 is 16 times 5. So 16 times 5 is equal to 80. And the reason why I factor it out this way is because I know that square root of 16 is 4. And square root of 5 is just square root of 5, and this is going to be the measurement of my line segment TU. And now I have the measurement of my two bases, which is given by the distance formula. And now I have the measurement of SV represented by a radical, 2 square root of 5. And I also have the measurement of TU, which also represented by a radical, 4 square root of so since both of them are radicals, we can now use our midline formula. So let's clear our uh, slide and let's start working with line segment YZ, which happens to be the median of our trapezoid. And to find the median of a trapezoid, the formula is right over there, half of base 1 plus base 2. And we know that base 1 is... 2 squared of 5, and we know that base 2 is 4 squared of 5. So let's use algebra so we can simplify and use the formula and find the midline or line segment YZ. So line segment YZ is half of base 1 plus base 2, and I know that base 1 is equal to 2 square root of 5. And I know that base 2 is 4 squared of 5, which is making my life a little easy because they have the same radical. And it's similar to combining like terms when you have radicals of the same index. So 2 plus 4 is going to be 6 squared of 5. And all I need to do now is take half of 6 squared of 5. And to make it more visual, half of 6 squared of 5 can be written as 6 squared of 5 all over 2. And I know that 6 is factorable by 2 times 3. And the reason why I factored it out, so that I can cancel out my 2, which is giving me 3 square root of 5 as the measurement of my line segment YZ, which happens to be the median of our trapezoid. So now we're able to find our mid-segment, yz using the formula of the distance formula of two points on an xy plane and the midline theorem or the mid-segment theorem that we have just formulated from the previous lesson. So now that we know our yz, now we're able to solve this particular problem in geometry given by a trapezoid represented by points on an xy plane. So next, let's work with another type of special quadrilateral, which is a kite. So we are seeing a kite, and we know that we have those lines with the little markings to be congruent, and we are given the angle H and angle K, and now we need to find the value of angle J and angle G. And to be able to do that, we need to use 
the kite property. And one of the properties or theorems in kite is that the opposite angles of a kite with congruent sides would be congruent. So we know that the measurement of B and the measurement of D, which corresponds to the measurement of J and the measurement of G, will also be congruent. So in this particular case, we're only looking for a single variable equation because since J and G are equal or congruent, we can represent it with a single letter. So first, let's use our basic theorem on polygons that if we have a quadrilateral, the sum of the interior angles of our quadrilateral will equal to 360 degrees. So now that we know our theorem on quadrilateral, by replacing j with x, and since g is congruent to j, we will also call it x, so that when we use the theorem on quadrilaterals, we can now set up our equation that will help us find x. So we have the measurement of g, measurement of h, measurement of j, measurement of k, add them all up, equal to 360, and we'll find the measurement of j and g. So we know that h is 132, and we know that k is 60 degrees. So using algebra, we know that g and j can be replaced by x. So now that we have two x's, add those two x's, and x plus x is 2x, and 132 plus 60 degrees is going to be 192 degrees, which can now be simplified by subtracting 192 on both sides so that 2x is equal to 168. And by dividing both sides by 2, we know that x is equal to 84 degrees. So now we have completed all the angles that we needed for this special quadrilateral. So x is represented by 84, so the measurement of angle G is equal to 84 degrees, and the measurement of angle J, since they are congruent, is going to be 84 degrees as well. So this is how we complete the measurement of this kite using the theorems that we have learned before about kites. So let's move on to our next problem, which is another kite. And in this kite, we are working on kite A, B, C, D, given the measurement of angle C, and a little clue for the measurement of angle A. And we know that our clue for the measurement of angle A is that little red square that we are seeing right now, because that little red square represents a 90 degree angle. So with that case, knowing that the sum of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees, we're going to be using the same technique from the previous sky problem so that we can find the measurement of angle D. So we are going to formulate our equation using the sum of a quadrilateral e equaling to 360 degrees. So measurement of A, B, C, and D is 360 degrees. All we need to do now is to replace measurement of A with 90, measurement of C with 46 degrees, and now we're going to use the property for our kite or the theorem for the kite that is similar to what we just have, that the opposite angles of those kites will be congruent. So B and D will be the same, so we can also represent it with single variable, which is X. So we have both X's, for the measurement of B and D because they are just the same. And by using algebra, we're now going to add the X's. So 2X plus 136 is equal to 360. Subtracting 136 from both sides will give us 2X equal to 224. And by completing our equation, dividing both sides by 2 will give us the measurement of angle B and angle D, which happens to be 112 degrees. So the measurement of B is 112, and the measurement of D is also 112. And now we have completed the four angles that we are working on for this special kite A, B, C, D. So this is how important theorems, and at the same time, your knowledge in algebra, to be able to solve geometric problems similar to 
the trapezoid and kite that we have worked on in this lesson. So your number bender challenge of the day is to solve this trapezoid by finding the values of X and Y. So are you are seeing a midline or a mid segment for our trapezoid. So that means you will most likely use the mid segment theorem to be able to complete your task in this number bender challenge that you are working on. So comment it down below if you can answer the X and the Y that we are working for or working on in this geometric problem of the day. And this is our lesson on how we are using the midline theorem to answer problems on trapezoids and using the formula for the distance of two points to be able to find the line segments that we are working on in some of the quadrilaterals in geometry. So make sure that you still remember those formula and you know how to use those formula and make sure that you are using your algebra scale correctly as well to be able to complete tasks in geometry similar to what we just did today. This is Dr. E and see you again next time.